Hello and good afternoon everybody. Today I have something a little bit unique to show you and a little bit of a, a showcase for you. This is not a completed model. It's finished construction but it's not painted. Uh, this, this model that I'll be showing you was a sort of a commission from a friend. Basically he is making a Mantic Kings of War werewolf army. And for those that are unaware, the werewolves are part of the undead army for Kings of War, but they don't have any characters. So he wants to theme an army around werewolves. So he asked me to take one of the Mantic werewolves and convert it into a necromancer for his army. So for this, um, he gave me a brief idea of what he wanted and basically said, run with it, do what you want. So... This is the final constructed miniature. It was built off of a Mantic Werewolf and it had some custom green stuff and scratch built components added on um, basically to make him rather unique and uh, he comes with a rather snazzy base that I've made out of some slate. Uh, for those that will probably recognise it, that have children, probably know it's uh, very Lion King themed, which I thought was kind of appropriate because he wanted him to stand above the rest of the army. Yeah, he's uh, he's only pinned on there because he wants to paint him separately. So I'll go through the parts, and it's all primed, ready for painting for him. Um, I'll name the parts and what was used to create them, and. There may be, in a future video, I may be doing a conversion lab sort of style of videos where you can see how to take a regular miniature or a model kit and super detail it up or even completely change the look of the miniature completely. So, with nothing more to do, I will explain the pieces and tell you what they're made out of. So, we'll start off from the front and work our way back. So, the staff here. I'll see how close I can get in with the camera without it going out of focus. That's probably about as close as I'm going to be able to get. Okay, so the staff is made, the actual shaft of the staff is made from a Revenant banner from Mantic Games. Uh, this is basically a, 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 it's a stick with uh, lots of bits bits and bobs stuck on it, like, like three twigs wound, wound together with pieces of string. Uh, we'll start from the bottom here. This bony structure here is actually a spine from the Mantic Zombie Sprue. Uh, basically you get a little little spine piece with some guts and stuff on the bottom of it that you can stick either into a base or into the torso of another zombie to make it look like he's missing his top half. So that's the bottom of this. This is where the necromatic feel comes from. Overall he's based mainly on a shaman. I've kind of made him like that. Uh, the good thing with working with res stick, some people don't like working with it. I love the stuff, especially for converting, because <laughs> if it was plastic, I would have had to cut this hand off and messed around with it and to stick it back in place, where with res stick, a few minutes with a hairdryer, malleable as anything, so I could bend the hands around the staff. So it's it's also been repositioned easier to fit on the stick as uh, on the stone as well. So he's repositioned so he stands on the stone properly. Uh, okay, so we'll work our way up. This skull here was made from a Tomb Kings banner from uh, Games Workshop's Warhammer Fantasy range. Uh, as you can see, it's a two-headed skull. I don't know if you can see the other end of that. Uh, it's a two-sided skull uh, that came off the banner. The bag and the tooth here, this thing here, was made out of green stuff. And then the top piece is a Skaven Plague Monk. Uh, I assume it's a banner top for the Plague Monks, but I thought it looked rather wizardy because it's got claws around it and this big crystal in the middle. Uh, all of these have been super glued onto this stick. And then I took uh, magnet wire, which is what I use for lighting my starships. It's a very thin gauge copper wire covered with an enamel an enamel layer. So instead of having plastic insulation like you see on most wires, this wire is run through a bath of a lacquer to protect it. And that's the second thinnest gauge you can get I used to make it look like it's wound around there. Okay, then we go to his his cape clutch clasp here. This was made out of grit. The whole cape here was made out of green stuff. This this area here was green stuffed. And the skull was green stuffed as well. 
Uh, okay, so we've got this satchel bag here. The bag part is from a Mantic Games ghoul sprue. And the wire, the, the strap that holds it on, as you can see it's like a sort of a braided wire cord sort of thing. That was made from the magnet wire again. All I did was took a hobby vice with a pin in it and then hooked the wire over and got my Dremel and twisted it up. And that was it. That's all I used for that. And then once it was finished, I run some super thin super glue over it to stop it from unraveling. I doubted it would because I tightened it. It was really tight anyway, but I thought I'd better do it just in case. You never know. Uh, same for his jewellery around his wrist. This was made the same way, but with thicker gauge. The idea was like a the Celtic sort of idea of jewellery, where it's just wound wire. And then in his hand here, he has a skull. This skull is from the Mantic Games Skeleton Sprue. So we'll turn him around and go to the back. Okay, so the back and the cape is completely made out of green stuff. This section here of the hood is just green stuffed. And then the cape itself was the actual, this piece is made out of Fimo, which if you're unaware is an oven baked clay but it gives you a lot more working time and it's more rigid when it's set, it doesn't move. Unlike green stuff, which is a bit flexible when it sets, this stuff is absolutely rock solid. It will not move, it's like stone, but that's because if you look at the actual way this cape is, this is the upper cape, which is like a fur, and that sticks out. I didn't want that wobbling around and falling off and getting knocked off in storage and that, but that, that's made out of Fimo. And then the underside of this cape here is just regular green stuff. I took thin strips of green stuff, rolled them out really thin, uh, smoothed them out so there was no uh, fingerprints on them with some Vaseline and a rubber tipped tool. And then I just stuffed it in and then left it to dry and then attacked it with a pair of scissors to make it look all rugged and ripped and basically knackered. And that is pretty much what I used to create him. And then he was just primed, as ethereal primed, with Vallejo uh, surface primer. And this is how he's going to get it received. So he can then crack on and get it painted, because he wanted to paint it himself. And I'll just talk about the base a little bit. The base is made, this, this rock here is actually a resin cast rock from uh, Woodland Scenics. And then the upper piece is just a lump of roof slate. We had some high wind last year, blew a couple of our slates off. Uh, I collected up the shrapnel that hit the ground and that's what that is. Uh, this All this rubble here is just... A combination of Games Workshop's basing kit, medium slate, and I had some leftover, and just the chippings that I took off of this. Just broke pieces off with a pair of pliers, and then just glued them together, and then just sanded it. Uh, same at the front here. This is the same sort of material, but I hit it with a hammer a few times to make lots of little rocks that could stick on the bases. So that is a, what you can do with a Mantic uh, Games uh, werewolf. So if there's any ideas or any suggestions, I would say, for any other conversions you would like to see built, please uh, leave it in the description below and I will endeavor to uh, oblige. Up and coming next is a recommendation or a request from another YouTube user is uh, some Lord of the Rings tutorials which I will be filming shortly. There may be about a two or a three week delay on those actually going live. I do realise I have been a bit lax on my YouTube videos of late but uh, personal life got in the way a little so uh, hopefully the, you should be hearing a lot more from me soon. So thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Until next time, happy modeling, guys.